Hi, this is Angela McClanahan, the author of the Life with Bob blog at HealthyPlace.com. Welcome back. Um, I've been talking a lot recently in the blog posts about um, medication compliance, and medication seems to be the number one problem, or at least the source of, the, of most of the problems that we have um, as parents of children with a psychiatric illness. Um, most recently, I mentioned that I've been having a lot of trouble getting Bob on board with taking his medications. He's starting to question it a lot more. He's starting to um, kind of balk at taking the medications, uh, either because of the way they make him feel. I'm not entirely sure if that's part of it because he's never mentioned any kind of side effects that he's having. Um, I've certainly never noticed any differences um, in terms of side effects. Uh, so I don't know if, if that's part of it or if it's more because of the stigma associated with his taking medication. Um, I don't think so much from his peer group because there are a lot of kids in his class and he's, strangely enough, met a lot of them that he's friends with. Uh, who are also taking medication for one thing or another. Um, so I think the majority of the stigma that he's receiving comes from his father. Um, regardless, um, I had a commenter on my last post uh, who said she's had the same problem with her son and his biological father uh, taking him off of his medications, and now she's getting resistance from her son after having put him, put him back on. Um, and her comment was, uh, she mentioned her son has a therapist who um, is trying to get him on board with taking his medications by talking to him about it and um, trying to get him to accept this and, and um, make the decision on his own. And her comment to this was, you know, why can't the therapist just tell him, take the pill because your mother said so, and uh, when did kids get all of this authority and decision-making um, ability? Which is true. Uh, when we were kids, I won't say how long ago that was, but we were certainly never given the opportunity to say, no, mom, I don't want to take that medicine, or um, I just don't feel like taking it today, or none of my friends are taking penicillin, so I don't want to either. Um, and no, I was not on any kind of psychotropic medication when I was a child, but I did have to take medication for a lot of other things. Um, I had severe allergies. I was usually sick all the time with some problem or another. Uh, and I took a lot of antibiotics and believe me, I didn't want to take any of them because none of them tasted very good at all. But at no point would it have been acceptable for me to say, yeah, I don't want to take this anymore. Um, I wasn't allowed to make those kind of decisions until I was an adult. And in fact, I did make the decision to stop taking, I took allergy shots for several years and I made the decision to stop taking those um, after I turned 18 and left home and could no longer afford them. Um, so the question I'm asking now is, when do you allow your child to have input um, with regard to their treatment or their treatment options? And beyond that, should you allow your child to have any input? Um, certainly just saying, no, it's a done deal. This is the way it's going to be. This is what you're taking because I said so. Obviously, these a lot of our kids are oppositional just in general. Um, and certainly giving them a barrier is going to more or less give them a written invitation to cross that barrier or break it and um, stop taking their medication as soon as they can. Um, certainly not all children will go this route. Uh, some of them will develop a mature, a greater maturity by the time they are 
able to make those decisions on their own. We hope, anyway, that they'll be able to say, yeah, I understand I need this, so I'm going to continue taking it. But unfortunately, what usually ends up happening is they have developed such an aversion to that authority of telling them, yes, this is what you have to do, that they immediately go the opposite route and say, well, I'm an adult now, I can make this decision, and I'm not going to take it. Uh, which leads to all kinds of problems, as a lot of people have posted in comments, and I know a lot of people personally who have had that happen with their adult children. Uh, once they turn 18, they're on their own, and they stop taking their medication, or they start self-medicating with, um, you know, street drugs. Um, on the other hand, though, if you allow a child who is not completely capable of making that kind of decision and doesn't have the maturity level to make that kind of a decision, if you allow that child to have input as to whether or not they take the medication they've been prescribed, is that helping them or hurting them? Um, Certainly, you wouldn't allow an asthmatic child, and I always go back to asthma, I know, because it's, it's something I'm familiar with, but you wouldn't allow an asthmatic child to say, I don't want to carry an inhaler because it's too, um, it takes up too much space in my pocket, or it takes up too much room in my purse, or I just don't like the way it tastes, um, because that's a life-threatening decision. Um, you know, if your child decides not to carry an inhaler, they could end up having an asthma attack and not having anything with them and, you know, either end up in ICU or dead. Um, that, of course, is not necessarily going to happen to our children if they stop taking the medication. They're not going to, well, most of them are not going to lapse into a seizure and die. Um, however, that uh, attack, so to speak, is going to uh, take place over a more extended period of time. And the um, consequences could end up being just as bad. So it's kind of a, a fine line, and I don't really know um, how to approach it with Bob, being that he is only you know, not quite 10, and definitely doesn't have that kind of decision-making capacity. Um, I did tell him recently about something else he was complaining about not having any input in. I told him, you know, I'm sorry that you don't understand. You're just going to have to trust me and know that every decision that I make, I make because I love you and because I want you to have the best possible life you can. And for that situation, that response kind of tided him over, I guess, and he was okay with that for the time being. Um, so I don't know if maybe I need to develop some kind of an approach similar to that for the medication issue, um, or if I need to just continue for the meantime to put my foot down and say, no, you're taking this, take the pill, <laughs> take the darn pill and be quiet. Um, but it's, I mean, it's, it's a difficult situation and one that I'm hoping I can resolve sooner than later. Well, uh, I will stop rambling on for now. And I, again, appreciate you tuning in and would invite you to come back and check out the other blogs here at HealthyPlace.com. And as always, thank you for watching and reading Life with Bob.